In this part, we want to have a look at complete graphs and minors. And this will give us our first characterization of planar graph. So here we see a complete graph on five vertices, the so-called K5. And it's called complete because every vertex is connected to every other vertex. And then there are also so-called bipartite complete graphs, like the K33 that we have here. For that, we have two sets of vertices, V1 and V2. And every vertex of V1 is connected to every vertex of V2. But these blue vertices here, they are not connected to each other, and the green vertices are also not connected to each other. In general, we call graphs bipartite if they are subgraphs of complete bipartite graphs. So if we have two subsets of vertices, where inside each of these subsets there is no connection. And we call these subsets bipartitions. So there's a reason why I showed you these two examples. These are non-planar drawings. And in fact, these two graphs do not admit any planar drawing. They are not planar graphs. And that we want to show now. For K5, this is quite simple. We can just apply Euler's polyhedra formula. How many edges do we have? We have five vertices, each is connected to each other, so we have five choose two, which is ten edges. Euler's polyhedra formula tells us we have at most three and minus six edges, which here is fifty minus six, which is nine, so this does not hold, and we know this is not a planar graph. But what about the K33? We do the same. How many edges do we have? We have three vertices here, three here. They are all connected to each other. So we have three times three equals nine edges. What does the formula tell us? Well, we have at most three and minus six edges. N is six, so we have 18 minus six, which is 12, which is larger. So by this formula, it could be possible that it's a planar graph. But I told you it is not. So how can we prove that? Well, in the counting argument we had here, we said that at every face there lie at most three edges. But this here is a bipartite graph. So there is no edge between a blue and a blue, and no edge between a green and a green vertex. What does that mean? If I take any hypothetical face, then the edges around it must form a cycle. A cycle of length 3, let's say it starts with blue, it goes to a green, and then it goes to a blue again, then it cannot close the cycle. It first has to go again to a green one. So the smallest cycles we have in this graph is of length 4. That means every face has at least 4 edges on its boundary. So we can do the same calculations as before, but we just change the number slightly. Now we have 4 times the number of faces, at most 2 times the number of edges. And if we plug this in to all the formulas, then this tells us in the end that we have at most 2n minus 4 edges. If we plug this in here, then this tells us that this graph can have at most 8 edges to still be planar, but it has 9, so it's not a planar graph. And in general, if we use this formula for bipartite graphs, then it gives us the adjusted theorem we have at most 2n minus 4 edges, we have at most n minus 2 faces, and there is always a vertex of degree at most 3. But what about smaller complete graphs? What about the k4 and the k23? Are they planar or are they not? Well, they both are planar. And to show that we don't need any formulas, we can just present drawings. This is a planar drawing of k4, and this is a planar drawing of k23, and this already proves that these are planar graphs. Now why did we look at these complete graphs? The reason is that I want to tell you something about contractions and minors. Oh, let's say we have a simple graph and we have some edge E between two vertices U and V. We want to contract this edge, and this gives us a different graph. How do we get this graph? First of all, all the other vertices except U and V they are untouched, they stay here. Then we add a new vertex that's like the merge of U and V. So this is our new vertex UV. For the edges, the black edges, again, they are untouched. We keep them. But for the green, red and blue edges, we have a new merged vertex here. So every edge that went to U before now goes to UV. Every edge that went to V before now again goes to UV. So if we add all these edges here 
and put them to UV, then we get the new graph. There's one problem. We still have this multi-edge here, which we don't want, so the multi-edges are merged, and then this is the contraction of the edge E from our graph G. Now, a graph is called a minor of another graph if we can obtain it by a set of contractions from a subgraph. So this sounds a bit complicated. In general, this is a minor of this graph because we can obtain it by a contraction. But even if the black edges would not be here in this graph, it still would be a minor of this because we can get it from a subgraph of G. Or for another example, this graph here is a minor of that graph. Can you prove why it is one? To do that, we can remove three edges here, the gray ones, and then we contract this edge in the middle to this contracted vertex. And then we get this plus graph. So this is a minor of this. Now, our first observation is that if we have a planar graph and we have a minor of it, then it stays planar. There is a very simple proof that goes by rerouting, which is again a standard argument. If we have a planar graph and we have this contracted edge here, let's just move the contracted vertex to the position of one of those, and all the green edges we just reroute around here. So they go basically along this old blue edge. And everything here was planar, so if you put them very close to where the blue edge was, then the drawing looks almost the same as before, and then it still is a planar drawing. And the main reason why we want to have this is that this gives us char a characterization of planar graphs, namely Kuratowski's theorem, which is very old from 1930. And he showed that a graph is planar if and only if neither k5 nor k33 are minors of G. So if and only if there's no way to get to these two graphs with only contractions, then you have a planar graph. And this is something that you can check in polynomial time. It's not very efficient, they are way faster algorithms, but it's the first efficient algorithm for us to check if a graph is planar. In the next part, we want to have a look at trees, which are some very simple graphs, and get our first drawing algorithm.